Hi, welcome back to my channel According to Cat. If you are new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. And what are we gonna be making today? I would like to thank David Owen Creates for putting together this collab hop, where all five creators are using the same seven everyday Dollar Tree items to make some really fun, budget-friendly DIYs. If you'd like to see how I used all seven of these items, make sure you stay tuned. If you'd like to know what supplies I've used, check out the description box below. And with all that being said, let's get right into it. Starting with DIY number one, using the wreath form and the bath mat. So the first thing I did was I took these smaller wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. They're the eight inch size. You get two in the pack and I'm using this bath mat also from Dollar Tree. And you wanna get some really good scissors. Fabric scissors would be great because this bath mat's rather thick and it was not um, easy to cut with dull scissors. So make sure you have some nice sharp scissors. I'm just going to cut some strips and you can see what I'm doing right here. I actually cut up the whole bath mat even though I didn't need the whole bath mat. You probably needed probably about half of it. So I'm just using some hot glue and I'm going to just attach it um, to that little metal piece there and basically glue it to itself. And as I take these strips of fabric, I am just going to just kind of keep putting a little glue right on there, swinging it around, putting a little more glue just to hold it in place. Now, just so you know, I am using the back of the bath mat, meaning the back of the bath mat is what is sticking out. I just liked the look of that better, but you could use the other side as well. Now, right here, I am going to join the next piece to the piece I already have on there. Now, you can see if you don't hold it long enough, it does pull right off. I am trying to pull those strips taut so it's nice and tight. So make sure you hold it a few seconds before you move on. And you can see I am just swinging it right around that eight inch wreath form. This was super easy and super quick to do. I really didn't spend a lot of time doing it and it was very forgiving since it is ripped up. <laughs> that but I will tell you it was very messy you'll see my shirt and my sweatshirt by the end of this I had all those little strings all over me but once this was all together those strings just basically stayed put on my wreath and they're not like all over my um, tables upstairs it's totally fine again I'm just showing you I am just moving right along and you can see I just keep joining it to itself. Whenever I wanted the two ends to meet, I made sure it was on the back. And right here, I'm showing you just to finish that out. I kind of lucked out. It ended in the perfect spot and I just wrapped it over and made sure that just tucked right in the back and used some hot glue. And I thought this turned out really cute, but there were some little straggly pieces. Make sure you just cut those off. So now I'm taking this boxwood greenery. I actually get it from Hobby Lobby on a garland and I cut it up and it goes a very long way. So these were just some extra pieces and I just threw them inside of that um, thrifted item. And you can see here, I am just cutting them apart and I'm just going to hot glue them in place to like kind of swag it right at the top. Now I, keep checking with my ribbon to make sure I had enough space between. This ribbon I got from burlapfabric.com. It is like a linen ribbon and I love it. It's frayed on the edges and it's like a black and taupe stripe and it's so pretty. This is the end of it. So I used it in a couple pieces for this um, collab because it's so pretty and I thought it kind of went with the whole theme of everything I was making. And you can see here, I just keep checking. I have enough space between that little swag or spray or whatever you want to call that at the top of my wreath. So I'm using the hot glue again. It stuck perfectly fine to this bath mat. And I'm just wrapping that uh, linen ribbon right around. And you can see I'm not using a ton of hot glue just because it can get stiff and look, I don't know, not fresh. I don't know if that's the right word, but we'll use it. And you can see I'm using a couple little dots right there just to kind of hold it in place. And look how cute that looks. Love it. And then I noticed there were some 
like bare spaces right at the top. So I wanted to just put a couple extra um, greenery sprigs right there. And I like to do that. I like to go back and look at my piece and see if I wanna add anything or take anything away. And now I'm loving how that looks. So if you watch my channel, you know I like to add my wreaths to either wooden frames or mirrors or anything like that. But I found this in my kids' toy stash that they used to play with. It's like an old um, wooden cut in, cutting board that you would have wooden fruit inside. It was really cute, but they were no longer using it, so I thought I would use it to craft with. I don't wanna make this permanent, so I am just using some tape to hold that ribbon in place. And you can see it's just kind of hanging right there in that wooden crate, and I love how it looks, so cute. This is done. I hope you like it as much as I do. Looking up at a tree, I remember how it started. I was lost in a dream when the fire in my heart said an open road. I've already found some light, the feeling grows. to DIY number two using the charger plate. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took this charger plate, this Dollar Tree mirror, these Dollar Tree poly ropes, and some Dollar Tree super glue gel. Yes, I used all Dollar Tree products on this, and you would never know it because it is so darn cute. I love this one. At first I was going to take the sticker off the back of this charger plate, but that was a no-go. The reason I'm using the back of it is because it's black and it will blend in with the poly rope and you won't see any like silver showing through as it was wrapped around. That's why I'm using the back. Now as for the mirror, I did take off those little foam feet just so that it would adhere better to the charger plate. Now I'm taking the Dollar Tree Super Glue Gel and I am just going to put so I don't know why I put it right on those little foam feet areas. I have no idea why I did that. And you can see I just kind of made um, some little squirts all around there. I am putting it right here in my Vaseline so that it I can use it next time without a problem. And I also followed up with a little hot glue so that it just adheres immediately while the super glue will hold it permanently. And I just kind of let that set for a second. So I am just using hot glue to wrap the poly rope right around the mirror. I didn't use any other type of glue and this held perfectly fine. I just take beads of it and run it right along and you can see and then I just take my rope, go right along that bead, then I'll add a little more hot glue and then I just keep going back and forth. It actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take and it did not take as much poly rope as I thought it was gonna take. It only took me one full one and then a little bit of another one. That's how much is in that that poly rope. Now, just so you know, I did get the poly rope in the automotive section. Not sure where it will be at your Dollar Tree, but that's where it was at mine. And if you are enjoying this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and it lets me know what kind of videos you want more of. There you go. And I'm just showing you go right around. So at this point, that's how far I got using that one um, bunch of poly rope. So that I thought took me really far. And you can see I just kind of ended it where it was. And now I'm just going to take my next one and I will meet it up to that first one. And you can't even see it when it's up on my wall. You can't even tell that um, it's not continuous. But I only had to join it one time. And you can see I'm right here at the end. And I made sure I went all the way out to the end. And then I went out even further so that you wouldn't see any of that plate showing through. Then I cut it there and I will go right up here, add some glue right towards the back and I'm just going to swoop it down and join it right there onto the charger plate. And there you go. So easy. Now you can see some glues there so I just took a baby wipe and I'm just going around and just wiping that clean. 
So once I'm done cleaning that up, I knew I wanted to have the option to hang this. You can see I tried to use something and glue it on. It did not work. I tried to use that same poly rope because I already had it out and I thought, oh, I could just use that to hang it. It did not work. It was unraveling and it would not adhere to the back of the charger plate. So what I did instead was I just took a piece of Dollar Tree ribbon and some twine and you can see I'm using both hot glue and that super glue gel and I am just finding a way to get this twine to stick to the charger just to give me the option to hang it up. Right now it's pressed up against the wall but in case I want to hang it up, I need to have some sort of hanging device on the back. It is a bit messy, but you will not see it. It will be against the wall. And this is done. Hope you like it as much as I do. A million people in the crowd, but I only see your face in all the lights. And as the bass keep pounding on me, baby, I really want to make you mine. DIY number three with the book burlap fabric and tumbling block. So what I did was I took this a Dollar Tree hardcover and the reason I picked this one is I liked the inside here. Do you see how it almost has like a speckled look to it and I just like the color of it because it's kind of like a taupe color. I'm using my sp sanding sponge here as a guide for how big I wanted my opening in the book. So as I measured where the center would be, you can see I'm going right around with my um, X-Acto knife or craft knife and just to get me started. And then I'm gonna go back with a Dollar Tree piece of wood. It's like the, they're wooden planks just as a guide to hold my knife against to keep me steady. And I literally just kept going around and around that same rectangle over and over and over again. And every once in a while I would pull some away and then I would go back and get a little deeper. And then I just kept doing this until I got as deep as I wanted to inside of that book. So I wasn't sure how easy this would be to cut. I will say I thought it was fairly easy to cut through. It wasn't too bad. And you can see that there are some straggly pieces. I will go back and trim that up and cut it off. And then I will even show you a little, <laughs> a little idea I had. I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but it worked. So I'll show you. And you can see I'm just going right around. I, I'm not being super careful. I mean, you can see I mean, I have this sped up a little bit, but I wasn't going slow and like being precise about this because let's face it, you won't really see. You Just the top few layers have to be pretty, pretty clean. The rest can be a little scraggly, I, I say. And I just kept going around. Now, here's another option. You can see I'm going there with my, my pencil to give me a, an idea of where it's at. I took my scissors. I wanted to give you another option if you don't want to use a craft knife. This worked out perfectly fine and this is another way you could do it. Might have been even a little cleaner to do it this way um, as far as the scragglies, but yeah. You can see right there, see? And I cut through a whole bunch. There you go. It still looks a little messy, so this was my idea, right? It's made of paper, which is in fact wood, so I thought, let's sand it. <laughs> with my Dollar Tree sanding sponge. Let me just tell you, it worked. Is that not weird? Is that weird? I don't know. It worked though. And it kind of like cleaned it right up. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Now I think it's deep enough. I like how it looks. And now I'm gonna take my Dollar Tree floral moss and I am going to just stick it right in there. Now, I was thinking about like mod podging my pages together, but I actually liked that they were not 
thick like you could tell it was a real book sometimes when you glue all the pages together then it almost looks like a fake book that has a plan in it but I wanted it to look like a real book so I didn't do that now here is the fabric that I was using I was going to use the burlap ribbon as my fabric and this is the non-wire kind from Dollar Tree and it can, it can unravel on the ends, so you have to be careful when you're using it, but if you don't handle it too much, it should be fine. So I just cut enough that would wrap around the back of the book, put a little hot glue right there on the back. I did not put any on the front because you can see hot glue through this. It kind of gets like all gross, so I made sure I kept that in the back, and I really didn't want to mess around with the front of it. So I just tried to pull it as tight as I could so that it would stay in place. And then I know the next ribbon, I can put a little hot glue right on the front and that will actually in turn hold the mesh ribbon right underneath it as well. They'll hold them together. So I just put a dot right there in the middle. Push that down, went around the back. And here's that same ribbon that I got from burlapfabric.com a long time ago. It's that linen ribbon. It is so beautiful. This is the end of it though. And I love that stuff so much. There you go. And that's ready to go. Now I'm just taking some twine, wrapping that around a few times. And then I wasn't sure if I was going to do a knot or a bow. At first I did a knot and then I'm like, oh, I think I might want a bow. So I cut it really short and made a little bow on the side with the same twine, hot glued that on, and you are none the wiser. It looks like it was a bow the whole time. So here's one of the, um, uh, another one of the supplies, which is a tumbling block. I'm only using one of the tumbling blocks on here, but I will use it on my next DIY. And you can see right here, I just added a little twine to the end of it. Then I cut a piece off now I'm going to take another piece and wrap it around. So it almost looks like it's like a hanging piece of wood, almost like a tag. That was my idea here. Wrapped it around a couple times. Now I'm using these letters that I got off of Amazon. I think you get like eight of each letter and then some numbers and some great, th this is such a great little pack. I love them because they're a little smaller than the Dollar Tree wooden letters. And I just spelled out cat, but I think using your monogram would be really cute on here, but I don't really have a monogram because I don't have a middle name, so I wouldn't have three letters. I would only have two letters. Yeah, I don't have a middle name. Um, my sister and brother also do not have a middle name. I don't know. My mom said it was an Italian thing. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Is that true? Do Italians not have middle name? My husband's Italian. He has a middle name. I don't know. My mom, she made stuff up, I think. But she told me that all the time and she said I didn't have a middle name because I was Italian. But I'm not quite sure how accurate that is. Anyway, so you can see I am just wrapping that right around the already existing twine and it made it look like a little tag hanging down. And I think that looks so cute. Love it. So at this point, I noticed the top of the book was kind of leaning back a little far. So I used a piece of basswood and hot glued it right there on the crease. And that was able to hold the top of the book more upright. And I like how that worked. So that worked out perfectly fine. And this is done. I hope you like it as much as I do. DIY number four, which is the last DIY where we use the clothespins and tumbling blocks. The first thing I did was I took these clothespins from Dollar Tree, this little tin can which had some mushrooms in, and that is a little succulent from Dollar Tree. So the clothespins, I just started taking some apart 
and I'm going to use hot glue and hot glue only and it held up just fine. So I just took a bead of hot glue. You can see that clothespin fit on there pretty much perfectly. Put a little bead right here, put that clothespin right on and you can see I'm using the table as my guide to keep it straight. So every time I put a cloth clothespin on, that's hard to say, a clothespin. <laughs> <laughs> on I had to like lay it flat on the table so that it didn't look like wavy you know you know what I'm saying like I wanted it to look like nice and straight and right here you can see how quick this went this was such a quick DIY and the only thing that took me long was taking all those apart and that didn't even take long again just a little bead you don't want to put too much glue or it will seep out so you don't need much it will hold just fine I think I said that like three times. So you know just how fine it will hold. And it worked out perfect. I think I used 11, I wanna say 11 clothespins, about 11, it was 11 or 12. Cause I remember I, I took 10 apart and then I think I had, to, I, had, I had it to add, I had it to add, I had to add another one or two clothespins to that. But right at the end, there was a tiny bit of a gap, I would say. Um, I kind of just centered it the best I could and you really can't tell. Right here, last one, and we are good to go. Look how cute that is. Looks like a nice little wooden boho planter. All right, so now that that is done, I am going to take this Dollar Tree pool noodle and I'm gonna use that as my floral foam. I put that right inside, cut that up. And that way you don't have to use as much, you know, moss or whatever you're going to put inside there, rocks. Now I use my scissor to put a, a slit right there so I can insert the succulent. And I am choosing some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree as my filler. So I'm going to kind of squeeze that right around the succulent. Probably should have put that in first because this is a small little area to get my fingers in, but it worked. And I just put enough in to cover up the pool noodle that was down there. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to add another texture by wrapping that around the wooden planter. I used the ridges that were already in the clothespins to kind of like hold it in place so I didn't need glue or anything. And I just tie a little bow. You can do a knot, you can do whatever. I decided to use a, do a little bow. And then I cut off any excess twine and then that's good to go. Now you can stop right here and leave it just like that because that is adorable. But I thought I would make a little stand. So I wanted to stick with the whole black taupe wooden theme that I had going on here. So I took some Waverly chalk paint in ink, which is a black, and I want to water it down to make almost a like a black stain. I add some water to it and then I just put it aside because I'm going to use it in a second. But I definitely didn't add enough water and I'll show you how I fix that. Now I'm taking the tumbling blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm using my Dollar Tree square and this will make sure that I keep them straight because I want to put a line here. This will uh, enable me to keep the amount of like because I'm going to use them as feet you see here and how I'm putting them inside of this block and that way it will not be wobbly that little stand will all be the same size all those little feet will be the same size now that little wooden open wooden block is from the Dollar Tree it's one of those drawer sets you know they used to have the flowers and the hearts and it's just a little opening this is the outside of it I already used the inside of the drawer set for another DIY and I had this left over and I thought this would make a really cute little uh, plant stand so you can see how I am using those lines that I drew on there with my ruler to make sure they're all the same size and that will keep this little plant stand super stable now I should have waited to put the feet on because you see right here, I wanted to keep the feet wooden and I wanted this to be like a wooden stain. You can see here, first of all, that it's way too dark. So I <laughs> tried to rub it, that didn't work. Then I thought, you know what, let me add some water. It actually did work when I added the water, so. 
not right away, but I had to add some more water. So I just take a lid, put some water in there, and just so you know, every time I say water, whenever I do this, I try not to say water because that's how I say water. And I am very self-conscious about it when I hear when I hear the voiceover back because I want to say water, but that doesn't sound right to me and my mouth doesn't make that movement. Do you say water or water? Water. But I'm very self-conscious when I do the voiceovers when I say that. I don't know if you've picked that up yet. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so you can see now it made more of a stain and I will wipe off any excess. And this was exactly what I was looking for. The first time I did it was way too dark. And when then it, when it dries, it gets even lighter and it's perfect. I did get a little stain on that foot there. So I just used my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and that came right off. And you see how great that looks? That stain turned out perfectly once it dried. I'm using that same twine, I'm gonna wrap it around a few times. You don't need to do this. I just thought it added, added a little fun element. And I like to add some things just to give you guys some more ideas, um, but it's cute. This time I just added a little knot. I did not add a bow because I put a bow on the other thing. And I can use this little stand for so many things. You could use it for a candle. You can use it for as a little planter stand. You could use it for, I don't know, pretty much anything. This was a bad idea. I don't know what I was thinking here either. I, once it was on, I saw a lot of fuzz and I didn't like it. So I'm like, well, let me burn that off. I should have definitely done it before just to be safe. Yes, yeah, sometimes I make some bad choices. And this is pretty much done. This is so cute. I hope you like this as much as I do. Lost again, going back. Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they mind my near and far? Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are? Send a prayer And here we are at the final reveal, my favorite part of the video because we get to recap everything we just made. So the first thing we made was this wreath using a bath mat. Yes, a bath mat. And I just love how it turned out. So shabby chic. Next up is the poly rope mirror. I think this could pass for Pier 1. Like, honestly, it is so pretty, even in person. Next up, we had, I think these are out of order, sorry. This is the clothespin planter. So cute and boho. Loving that. And last but not least, we have the book with the succulent inside. Love this as well, very different. So which one of these is your favorite? Please tell me down in the comments below. If I had to choose, I'm gonna pick the mirror. I am so in love with this. It looks so high end and I just love the way it looks with my decor. So yeah, that's the one I'm picking. And remember, please be sure to click on the link below. It'll take you over to the next creator in the hop. Thanks guys. So that's it, that's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today and I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. If you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please do so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you did. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. If you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please do so. Oh my god, itch.